Well, good morning. And uh, welcome to downtown Franklin. What a special day this is today. I want to start out with just simply some thank yous as I welcome you to this event downtown Franklin. First of all, I want to express, express my gratitude to the pastors and the historians, the four people that brought this idea to us. I want to thank our city staff that has worked so hard to make this a reality, particularly our city administrator, Eric Stuckey, and the Board of Mayor and Alderman who are here. If you're a Board of Mayor and Alderman, please raise your hand. They made it possible, and of course, our community, you, the citizens of Franklin, also have had a part in making this happen today. You know, we use a number of different taglines whenever we talk about Franklin. We talk about historic Franklin, you know. We were founded in 1799, and in just nine days, October 26, we'll be celebrating when Abram Murray founded Franklin, Tennessee, named after Ben Franklin. We've had a lot of significant milestones in our history, and certainly the Battle of Franklin was one of those milestones. And preservation has been an important thrust for our community through the years, preserving our downtown, preserving historic structures. And I think this is a, an example of continuing preservation in our community, particularly preservation of stories that need to be told and have not been told. Sadly, there are too many stories that have never been told. And today, as we look at this event and hear our speakers, we're gonna start the process in Franklin, Tennessee of setting the example for other cities in Tennessee, other cities across our nation about how Franklin knows how to do things right and Franklin knows how to be a leader uh, for everyone else. So I, along with the Board of Mayor and Alderman and all those other folks I mentioned, are so proud to be part of a significant new page in our history. And I applaud each and every one of you that have had a part in it. So let's make sure we mark this day today as a start in new history for the city of Franklin. So allow me to introduce Eric Stuckey, our city administrator. Good morning. And it is a good, good day in Franklin, Tennessee, folks. You know, it's an honor to speak to you today, and I want to start with a little bit of background and then a couple comments. I won't take a lot of time, but this is important to think about how we got here. You know, in the wake of the tragedy that occurred in, in Charlottesville, Virginia in August of 2017, there's a lot of talk nationally and locally about how we deal with our Civil War history. Well, four men in our community in particular took it beyond talk. And that's when, as I like to say it, that's when three pastors and a historian walked into City Hall. That's not a setup for a joke, this is, this is serious. Uh, but these men, with a firm faith in God and a belief in this community, asked some important questions of the mayor and me initially, but ultimately of our board, your elected leaders, and of the community as a whole. And just to paraphrase, do we have the wisdom and courage to tell more of our story? Are we willing to tell more of our story in this place, the city square? Will we share more elements of our history, especially as it relates to the experience of African Americans before, during, and after the American Civil War? So with those questions in mind, over the next several months, these gentlemen and many others, probably almost all of you, engaged in some discussion, some thinking, some prayer, 
that ultimately developed the, the concept of the Fuller story that we're, we're here to present today and, and, and put into reality today. This concept first was brought out publicly in August of 18, almost a year to the day of the Charlottesville tragedy at a, at a Board of Mayor and Alderman work session. A month later, in September of 18, the board unanimously adopted a resolution supporting the, sto the Fuller Story initiative. From there, the language of these five markers were drafted carefully. Uh, Eric Jacobson and the team at Battle of Franklin Trust took the lead in that, but ultimately it was reviewed by a number of uh, prominent historians and experts. They vetted it, they looked at it, they helped draft and redraft. Just to mention some of those folks, Dr. Car Dr. Carol Van West, the state historian, Rick Warwick, our Williamson County historian, Dr. LaRotha Williams from TSU, Laura Holder from the Tennessee Civil War National Heritage, Dr. Eleanor Fleming, historian and Franklin resident. That wasn't it. The city's Civil War Historic Commission reviewed carefully, gave input, and ultimately recommended to the board these five markers. We also engaged the State of Tennessee Civil War uh, Trails Program staff to further give it review. And Eric will tell you there's tens, twenties, thirties, forties, forty more people that, that give direct input about what we're doing and how we do it and how we say it. But ultimately on February 26th of this year, the board gave final approval to these markers. The community and your elected leaders ultimately answered yes, unanimously, yes, we're telling the fuller story. <clears throat> Let me recognize directly the people that made that vote today. Mayor Ken Moore, Alderman Clyde Barnhill, Alderman Blandy, Brandy Blanton, Alderman Pearl Bransford, Alderman Beverly Berger, Alderman Margaret Martin, Alderman Dana McClendon, He's making a rare appearance at a ribbon cutting, and Alderman Scott Speedy. They made today possible. Thank you. Let me close with this. The stories of our history that we tell, our, tell one another and that we tell our children and where we tell them matters. It matters more than we'll ever know. Over the past 15 years, this community has made a concerted effort to reclaim Battlefield with the goal of telling Franklin's story of the Civil War more completely, an important American story. We've received a lot of acclaim for that, rightfully so. What's taking place today is the next step. It aligns with that beautifully in terms of how we tell our story. And that story isn't always pretty. History and truth rarely is. But ultimately, our story is a story of resilience, a story of pain that is ultimately followed by recovery and triumph, a story where slaves become soldiers and citizens and brothers and sisters, a story of love of community and of one another, a story we continue to write I pray that the example we provide today to our world, a, war, a world that is far too focused on division and difference, will take note, a note that we accept one another. We humbly tell the fuller story that honors all of us and builds a better community. Thank you. You guys ready? Thank you, and it's my pleasure to introduce the New Hope Academy Choir. Good morning, my name is Tina Boone, and I have the true privilege of being the music teacher at a community school here in Franklin called New Hope Academy. New Hope Academy was started in the fall of 1996. Our mission statement says, New Hope Academy is a Christ-centered school educating children of diverse racial and socioeconomic backgrounds by establishing a biblical worldview and preparing each of these children to flourish academically, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. We are located on Downs Boulevard close to the soccer fields. Drop by and visit us anytime. You are now going to hear volunteers from third, fourth, and fifth fifth and sixth grade singing to you the first Amazing Grace 
and then America the Beautiful.
Y'all, I messed up. I forgot to mention Alderman Ann Peterson when I mentioned my alderman. <laughs> that, that, they, they teach you that first day in city manager school, and I just totally messed that up. But Ann, thank you for your support, too, and thank you. <laughs> My name is Eric Jacobs, and I'm the CEO of the Battle of Franklin Trust, and I, I got involved with this effort um, the day after the prayer vigil that was held here in the square in the days following the events at Charlottesville. And I have to say, I couldn't be more proud to be part of this effort. This is a wonderful day to echo what Eric Stuckey mentioned earlier. This is your history. This is all of our history. It belongs to all of us. All of us. It doesn't belong to just one side or one group. All of us. And as I look out on this crowd, I can see countless people's faces whose history has too long been ignored. One of the things I learned about history a long time ago is that history is very difficult. Sometimes it's sharp. Sometimes it's thorny. And sometimes it's just difficult to relate. One of the truths is that right here in our town square, for nearly half a century, human beings were bought and sold. One of the other pieces of history that's long been forgotten is nearly 180,000 black men joined the United States Army and Navies to help defend and save the Union and preserve the United States of America. And when the Civil War ended, the military action may have ended, but proxy wars went on for decades. There was a riot right here in Franklin. Reconstruction had successes for the African-American community, and perhaps one of the greatest failures is that Reconstruction ended. But we're not here to talk about just the terrible elements of the past. We're here to tell the truth, the truth we hear a lot in recent years about how history has been erased or being erased. Catchphrases. I would argue that there's a lot of history that's been erased across this country for the better part of 100 or 150 years. Some of it right here in Franklin. Right behind you stood the first brick courthouse in Williamson County. Attached to it was a market house in which just about anything could be bought or sold, including people. It was torn down before the war. We all know that many years after the war, the Confederate monument that stands today was erected right where that location had once existed. I think if we're honest, we'll just admit that history was erased in the center of our square a long time ago and replaced with something else. And the truth is both can exist in the same sphere because in some ways they both existed in the same sphere 150 years ago. It's time to tell the truth. It's time to tell the whole story, and it's time to tell the fuller story. And that a big part of moving forward is accepting what our past was, not what it just means to us individually, but what it meant to us collectively. When this was all over, 700,000 people had died. When this war finally ended, 700,000 people had died. But four million people were free. Free. Free at last. It's taken us until 2019, but we can live with the fuller story. This crowd, I think, is evidence of that. I want to applaud our city leadership, mayor, city administrator, alderman, but I want to especially thank Kevin Riggs, Chris Williamson, and Hewitt Sawyers, who have profoundly changed my life and for the better. I am proud to do this, proud to be part of this. Thank you very much. My name is Kevin Riggs. I'm one of the three pastors, but the best preacher up here is Eric Jacobson. <laughs> now, I get a little emotional, but I'll do my best. Um, but it, this is a great day, um, a day that, to be quite honest, got here quicker than we thought would, if you consider the timeline. And um, it's, just, it's just fabulous. And I think it's a historical day, and one day 
you'll be able to tell people uh, that, that you were here. Now, if you want to come, I said this at MLK, that my goal for retirement is to come down here and sit on one of these benches and drink a milkshake and watch people look at the statue and the signs. And so I will be down here sometime Saturday <laughs> with a milkshake, milkshake? <laughs> just watching. And so come join me, all right? And uh, just keep celebrating this glorious day. But anyway, a couple years ago, after the tragedy in Charlottesville, we held a prayer vigil right here in downtown Franklin, in front of our courthouse, where we're standing right now. And I had the privilege of speaking at that rally and, and talked about our city's own need for healing, lingering wounds from bygone days. The next day, Eric Jacobson, whom I did not know at the time, reached out to me and we met for coffee and he began sharing his ideas about providing historical context to our Civil War monument. And I just listened. But not long into our conversation, I interrupted Eric and told him that what he was saying may sound good to me and him, two middle-aged white guys, but what we thought really didn't matter a whole lot. I told him we needed input from our African-American brothers and sisters. For too long, their stories have been left out, marginalized, and ignored. And so I, and so I told Eric he needed to meet two of my African-American pastor friends and listen to their stories and their concerns. And I didn't tell my two friends that this historian was gonna call them. I just left it at that and didn't want them to know anything. Hewitt, Chris, and myself have been friends for over 20 years. Between the three of us, we have 70 plus years of pastoral ministry in Franklin, Tennessee. This just didn't happen overnight, in other words. This came out of relationships. We have spent years talking and listening and praying about race relations in our city and in our country. Eric met with them, and then the four of us met together, and the rest of the story is still being written. From the very beginning, we decided we wanted to build something up instead of tearing anything down. We decided we wanted to do something that would unite our city instead of divide us. We also felt strongly about sharing stories from the perspectives of the slaves and what they overcame. Their story is one of triumph and endurance that should inspire all of us. We also sensed that we had an opportunity to show other cities how to lovingly and courageously interact with a difficult period of our history. It was also important to us that churches lead the way. Our goal has never been to tell a complete story, just a fuller, more inclusive story. Our desire is not to erase history or to rewrite history. Our desire is to embrace history, engage in history, and uplift our unsung heroes. The book of Proverbs tells us, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. The markers being unveiled today and the creation of a statue to the United States Colored Troops that begins today, do that very thing. Speak up for those who can't speak up. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a beautiful day. This is a beautiful day. This is a glorious day. This is a historical day. But this is not the end. This is the beginning of telling a fuller story, a more complete story, an honest story. This is the beginning of telling our story, black and white, freed and enslaved, privileged 
and oppressed. It is in telling our stories that we are united as one. The psalmist tells us stories we have heard and known, stories our ancestors handed down to us. We will not hide these truths from our children. We will tell the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord and about his power and his mighty wonders. Good morning. My name is Chris Williamson, and I am honored to be here today. For the past 25 years, I have been a proud resident of the city of Franklin. I live up the road in Founders Point Division, subdivision where the founder of the city, Abram Mari, and his family are buried. In the city of Franklin, which was founded in 1799, white planters prospered from the cultivation of various crops and the raising of purebred livestock. As a result, farmers in this city depended heavily upon thousands of enslaved Africans to work their fields and plantations. The inhumane institution of slavery continued into the 19th century when much of the city's economy continued to rely upon slave labor. After the period known as Reconstruction, racial violence increased in Franklin as whites worked to ensure and maintain their dominance. As the county seat, Franklin was the site where several African-American men were lynched. People who looked like me were looked down upon and could not get a fair trial in this city or in this courthouse which stands behind me. Completed in 1858, this is the city's third courthouse. History reveals that five African-American men were lynched in Williamson County from 1877 to 1950. These five men were either taken from the county jail or from this courthouse before their trials and hung by mobs. There was Amos Miller, a 23-year-old African-American man who was lynched before his trial in August 10th, 1888. He was forcibly taken from the courtroom and hanged from the railings of the balcony of this courthouse. Many would prefer this kind of history to be hidden and never mentioned, but in our haste to arrive at quote unquote reconciliation, we often circumvent the truth telling process. But reconciliation does not come without truth and neither does communal healing. Therefore, I stand before you today as a truth teller. I stand before you today as a preacher of the gospel and a minister of healing in the name of Jesus. I stand here to tell you that there is redemption on this very spot. This same courthouse where black men were often denied a fair trial was also used in a positive manner during the Civil War. When Union forces took occupancy of the courthouse, former slaves freed by the Emancipation Proclamation would come to this courthouse to become soldiers. My black ancestors would go into the basement of this building, walk into the provost's office in order to attain their official paperwork to join the United States Army. I can picture them now going into this courthouse as emancipated slaves and coming out proudly as soldiers of the Union Army. And in regards to this building, my ancestors went from being slaves to being soldiers. Overall, approximately 186,000 former slaves would fight for the Union and secure their freedom. It is believed that the North could not have won the Civil War without the help of the United States Colored Troops soldiers. This is why, that's right. This is why it is only right to have a statue of a USCT soldier 
standing right outside of this courtroom in a place of what Dana McClendon calls a place of equal nobility to the Confederate monument. Yes, hopefully next year that statue will be standing here. Can't you see him standing proudly? Can't you see him standing worthily? Can't you see him standing powerfully? And in order to see this vision come to pass, we need your help. And being the preacher that I am, I have to ask you for money. <laughs> this effort is estimated to cost $150,000. And on the back of your program, you will find instructions on how and where you can submit your tax-deductible donations for this worthy and historical cause. Ever since the city's founding 220 years ago this month, there has never been any kind of permanent representation of African Americans on the square. But thankfully, with these markers, all of that changes today. That changes today. You see, Pulaski, Tennessee, Pulaski, Tennessee is known for being the birthplace of the KKK. Bedford County, Tennessee is known for being the birthplace of Nathan Bedford Forrest. Nashville, Tennessee is known for being the birthplace of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. But I stand here today to let you know that Franklin, Tennessee will be known for being the birthplace of the Fuller story. Therefore, I declare and decree that October 17th, 2019 is truly a day of redemption. October 17th is a day of recognition. It is a day of remembrance. It is a day of representation. And thanks be to God, it is a day of rejoicing. God bless you. And now, we are going to be blessed with a song by Miss Charlene Harris. Go 
down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, let my people go. Oh, let my people go. I'm, I'm happy to have standing to my left my old friend Bill Radcliffe, representing a USCT soldier. And the Stars and Stripes. Now, for the moment that we've been working toward for two years, if I could ask everyone to take your assigned places. All right, is everyone ready? Marker number one to my right, where Kevin Riggs is standing, is the fuller story marker to reconstruction and successes within the African American community in the decade following the Civil War. Kevin, please unveil it. Marker number two, directly uh, in front of me, to the United States colored soldiers who helped preserve the Union and who fought for their own very personal freedom to be unveiled by Hewitt Sawyers. Hewitt, let's see it. Marker number three, to my front left, where Eric Stuckey is standing, is to the Franklin Riot of 1867, which came down 3rd Avenue and spilled right here into the square and into this corner. Eric, please unveil the marker. And now, I'd like to uh, announce some late-breaking news. We were only going to unveil three markers today. We're going to unveil all five. <laughs> to my right front facing 3rd Avenue, you'll see Mayor Ken Moore. He'll be unveiling a marker to the Battle of Franklin. For those folks who visit our wonderful community but don't make it to the battlefield, they'll be able to learn what happened here on November 30th, 1864. Mayor Moore, please unveil the marker. <clears throat> and last but not least, marker number five, where Pastor Williamson is standing. This marker is so long overdue, and it tells the story of Williamson County's first brick courthouse, but the market house that was attached to it 
long since demolished, long since ignored. It is time indeed to tell the fuller story. Chris, please unveil the marker. Now I'd like to introduce Reverend Hewitt Sawyers of the West Harpeth Primitive Baptist Church, who will lead us in prayer. May we pray. Our Lord and our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Our Father, as we meet on this great day, as we come to this public square, as we come on this day, on this grand occasion, we bow in humble submission to your will. Father, we're thankful for how you have brought us this far. As we reflect on where we have come from, we are thankful for what you have done. Father, we realize what all we have come through we realize, Father, the purpose for which we have assembled. And now, God, as we think about our forefathers and what they had to suffer, we realize, God, that if it had not been for you on their side, they would not have been able to make it. But God, even these markers that we are dedicating today, the truths that are being reflected in these markers, we honor what the truth is. And we thank you, God, that we have reached a place that we can place the truth of these markers in our communities. And we pray God right now that we will understand as a community that this truth needs to be told. Help us, oh God, to understand one another. Help us to realize, God, that reconciliation cannot happen if truth is not told. Help us to understand, God, that even right here in Franklin, that we can be a light not only for our community, but we can be a light for the world. Father, thank you for our city leaders who were stood up to take a leadership role. Thank you for planting it in the hearts of these, my brothers, who stood with me and our historian who stood with us, that we might be able to hear from you. And this has come to fruition in this action today. Now, God, because you are the one who was able to plant all of this, we give you glory and we give you honor. Now, God, you who do all things well, we honor you and we give you glory. Now, Father, our Constitution says that we are to li live and give honor and glory but what we need, need more than anything else is we need to know that we can live in peace with one another. Now, Father, as we dedicate these markers today, 
We want to know that you are the one that are going to let us live in peace. Let us know, Father, as we close out here today, that because you are our God and that we are glorifying you, that our last action that we take as we leave is that we're going to have a nation that is under God and that we're going to have liberty and we're going to have justice for everyone that we come in contact with. For we ask it in the gracious and powerful name of our God. Amen, amen, and amen.